Welcome back, this is Dr. Jen Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. The five benefits of fasting on the gut microbiome. Before I get started, I'm excited to announce that our educational modules on diet, lifestyle, and nutrition has launched. It is currently active. There will be a discount for those people who sign up by August 26th. After that, prices will go up. These educational modules include um, topics like hypothyroid, uh, autoimmune disease, GI dysfunction, etc. Now, there will also be a message board in there and weekly Q and A's. We'll also do interviews with industry experts to figure out what's going on with your health. So let's get back to the regular video. So five benefits. Increase microbiome diversity when you fast. And the way that occurs is there's a reduction in nutrients allowing the less dominant bacteria to proliferate and grow, increasing the diversity. There's a promotion of beneficial bacteria when you fast. And the way that happens is there's an increase in short chain fatty acids, increase in anti-inflammatory effects, improved barrier function, things like leaky gut or dysbiosis. So the change in gut motility and change in pH is what helps the beneficial bacteria. So gut motility will change obviously because you're not eating, but the pH of your stomach will go down. Okay. Oftentimes people don't realize that uh, when you have reflux problems, it's not too much acid for most people, it's too little acid. You need acid to break down your fats, proteins, carbohydrates. It also helps signal the enzymes to help break those um, fats, carbohydrates, and protein, right? So a proper pH in the stomach is necessary. It alters bile metabolism. So bile is produced through the liver and is stored in the gallbladder and it will contract as necessary to digest fats. Now, when you have uh, lack of food, your, bio, your gallbladder will not contract. It will just store the bile. Now bile has like antimicrobial effects. So it gives it a, your gut microbiome a break from the antimicrobial properties of bile. So it gives it a favorable, favorable condition for the gut microbiome to grow. Only caveat to this is that if you have gallbladder problems to start with, if you have gallstones, sludge, ga sludge in the gallbladder, gallbladder attacks, hypothyroid where your gallbladder may not contract very well, or you have just problems digesting fats in general, uh, you want to be cautious because bile gets stored in the gallbladder and you have a higher propensity for things like gallstones. So you just got to be careful. And that's why when you say, I say, if you're going to do a prolonged fast, you should be monitored. And it's important that you do that, okay? Now, the third benefit, there's a reduction in pathogenic bacteria. Basically, it creates a more challenging environment for the pathogenic bacteria to grow, okay? Number four, it enhances gut barrier function. And the way it does that is it increases short chain fatty acids, increase beneficial bacteria, and decrease in pathogenic bacteria. Basically, you give it an environment to strengthen the gut barrier. So it helps with things like dysbiosis, leaky gut, or intestinal permeability. The last thing is it modulates the immune system. If you give your body a break from eating, just the process of eating and, and digesting increases what we call reactive oxygen species. So if you give your body a break, it'll decrease reactive oxygen species, decrease inflammation overall, favoring the beneficial bacteria and short chain fatty acids and gut barrier function. You have to re also remember that modulating the immune system, how the microbiome uh, speaks to the enteric nervous system and how the enteric nervous system speaks to the brain. That's the gut brain axis where they communicate back and forth. So if a bad brain, you might have a bad gut. If you have a bad gut, you have a bad brain. Meaning, let's say you have a lot of digestive issues. Oftentimes these patients come in and they have brain fog or cognitive difficulties. It's because of that crosstalk between gut and brain, brain and gut. So it's important to look at this. 
Now, the next question people are going to ask me is, you know, what is the exact time frame that I should fast? And there is none. So there's intermittent fasting where e you're eating in a short period of a uh, short window, and then you have prolonged fast, which can go up to three to five days. Anything beyond one or two days, you need to be monitored. And your gut microbiome is different from everyone else's. So we can't give you like a specific time frame. A safe period would probably be a 16 and eight. You eat in an eight hour window, and you do that for two or three weeks and see how you feel, right? And then maybe you can go to a 618, eating a six hour window, right? And then you can maybe try to do a one day fast, but you need to kind of build up to it. And again, there is no exact uh, fasting method that's gonna work for one individual versus another. You also have to be careful if you're hypoglycemic and you're pregnant or you're breastfeeding and those types of things. So just be smart about how you're going to do it. Um, everyone is an individual, but fasting can have benefits on the gut microbiome, all right? My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results, and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.